this was one where I was invited to come in to direct the film. Originally, the executive producer of American Masters, Michael Cantor, had wanted to do a Sammy Davis Jr. documentary for him. About five years ago, he had the idea. So he found Larry Maslin, who's a colleague of mine at NYU, to do research and write a script and write a proposal. And after Larry wrote the proposal, they, dec they decided they needed to raise the money. And a documentary like this, with all the music and all the archival footage, costs about a million and a half dollars, you know, one million five hundred thousand dollars. So they f you have to always figure out where you're going to get the money from for these documentaries. So they put together a huge, huge grant for, and submitted it to the National Endowment of the Humanities. And the National Endowment of the Humanities takes about six months to evaluate it. We had to have scholars and historians, they had to write a script. They submitted it to NEH, and then six months later, they got they 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 received seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So when they got that money in, and then they started to go out and raise more money because now they had a big lump of money, big lump sum of money, lump sum of money. Then they brought me in, and then my team was associate producer and a researcher, and we start collecting all the archival material, all the audio material, and we. We, and they contacted the estate, which is run by Sammy's adopted son, Manny. And as we went through the estate, we found that Sammy Javis Jr. had done these audio tapes with Boyd Breuer when he was doing the autobiography, which is like a gold mine. Because you hear Sammy opening himself about how he felt rejected by being, not being, dis, being disinvited at the gay lot of Kennedy, his feelings about being a golden boy, having to kiss Paula Wayne, so we had the audio. The other thing that we had from that estate was Sammy was also not only multi-talented with all the things I've mentioned, dancing, singing, comedian, he was also a very prolific photographer. So all these stills you see at the end of the film, most of them were Sammy Davis Jr. stills. So we've done all that research, I read all these books, I read all these articles, and then we start to look up line up of people that we want to think we want to interview to help tell the story. So we had Todd Boyd, Gerald Early, you know, Margot Jefferson, then we said, well, let's see if there's anybody who's still alive who, would, who knew Sammy. Jerry Lewis, Kim Novak, David Steinberg, you know, those people, Buzz Cummins, you know, Bert Boyer. So you start to really, you know, reach out to all these people to see that if they will do an interview for you. And then it's just going out on location to these places. I went to California to interview Billy, I came, went to New York. It took me about six months to get Whoopi to say yes. I had to go to The View after she finished the show, and she only was going to give me 10 minutes. And she gave me 20 minutes. <laughs> I called Professor Early, and we got him to come from St. Louis to Chicago. We got a hotel. We got him in the seat for an hour and a half. You know, so you really have to do it. And then after you do all that, you got all this material. Then you go in the edit room, and you start putting it together. Now, we had a script, which was sort of a template, which is usually, uh, pretty unusual for a documentary. But we had a script to help lay out the story. And it, take, it took us about six months to edit the whole film. Six months. But the whole process from the initial idea that Cantor had to, you, you folks see it on the screen, probably took four and a half, five years. <laughs>